Before we begin, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss a single one of our upcoming videos. Tammy Wynette was born Virginia Wynette Pugh in Tremont, Mississippi on May 5, 1942. Her father was a farmer and local musician who died of a brain tumor when Wynette was nine months old. Her mother worked in an office as a substitute school teacher and on the family farm. After her husband's death, Mildred Pugh left her daughter in the care of her parents, Thomas and Flora Russell and moved to Memphis, Tennessee, to work in a defense plant during World War II. In 1946, Mildred Pugh married Foy Lee, a farmer. Now, it was by 1954, Wynette's mother was working at the University Dry Cleaner on North McLean Boulevard in Memphis. Three young musicians, bass player Bill Black, the cleaner's owner's younger brother, guitarist Scotty Moore, and their singer, a certain Elvis Presley, often used the upstairs area to rehearse, and the 13-year-old Wynette Pugh would delight in being bundled into the laundry tubs and wheeled around by them. The Russell home had no indoor toilets or running water. Wynette was raised with an aunt, Carolyn Russell, who was only five years older, more like a sister than an aunt. As a girl, Wynette taught herself to play a variety of musical instruments her father had left behind. Wynette attended Tremont High School, where she was a star basketball player. It was a month before her 1960 graduation, and several months before her 18th birthday, she wed her first husband, Erpel Bird, a construction worker. Bird had trouble keeping a job, and the young family moved several times. Wynette worked as a waitress, a receptionist, a barmaid, and also in a shoe factory. Now, by the time 1963 rolled around, she attended a beauty college in Tubelo, Mississippi, where she learned to be a hairdresser. She continued to renew her cosmetology license every year for the rest of her life, just in case she ever had to go back to a daily job. Wynette tried to earn extra money by performing at night. Bird did not support her ambition to become a country singer, Wynette said, and she left the marriage before the birth of their third daughter. According to her, as she drove away, he told her, Dream on, baby. Years later, Wynette said Bird appeared at one of her concerts as she was signing autographs and asked for one. She signed it, Dream on, baby. Now it was while working as a hairdresser in Midfield, Alabama, in 1965, Wynette sang on the Country Boy Eddie Show on WBRC-TV in Birmingham, which led to a performance with country music star Porter Wagner. In 1966, she moved with her three daughters, Gwen, Tina, and Jackie, from Birmingham to Nashville, Tennessee, in hopes of landing a recording deal. After being turned down repeatedly, she auditioned for Epic Records producer Billy Sherrill. Initially reluctant to sign her, Sherrill found himself in need of a singer for a tune written by Bobby Austin and Johnny Paycheck. It's called Apartment Number no. 9. Upon hearing Wynette's version, he was impressed and put her under contract. Released in December 1966 as Wynette's first single, Apartment number nine just missed the top 40 on the country charts, peaking at number 44. It was followed by Your Good Girl's Gonna Go Bad, which became a big hit, peaking at number three. The song launched a string of top 10 hits that ran through the end of the 1970s, interrupted only by three singles that didn't crack the top 10. After Your Good Girl's Gonna Go Bad was a success, my Elusive Dreams, a duet with David Houston, became her first number one in the summer of 1967, followed by I Don't Want to Play House later that year. I Don't Want to Play House won Wynette a Grammy Award in 1967 for Best Female Country Vocal Performance, one of two wins for Wynette in that category. 
During 1968 and 1969, Wynette had five number one hits, Take Me to Your World, D-I-V-O-R-C-E, Stand By Your Man was reportedly written in the Epic Studio in just 15 minutes by Wynette and Cheryl. The song established Miss Wynette in the role of a long-suffering but determinedly loyal wife holding the family together even when her husband strayed. Wynette was inducted as a member of the Grand Old Opry radio show, a country music institution, on January 4, 1969. Also joining the Opry that day was Wynette's contemporary and personal friend, Dolly Parton. During the early 1970s, Wynette, along with Loretta Lynn, ruled the country charts, and was one of the most successful female vocalists of the genre. During the early 1970s, Wynette's number one single included He Loves Me All the Way, Run Woman Run, and The Wonders You Perform, all three from 1970. Good Lovin' Makes It Right, Bedtime Story, both 1971, My Man Understands, Till I Get It Right, 1972, and Kids Say the Darndest Things, 1973. In 1968, Wynette became the second female vocalist to win the Country Music Association Awards Female Vocalist of the Year Award, later winning an additional two other times, 1969 and 1970. Her record for most consecutive wins stood until 1987, when Reba McIntyre won the award for the fourth consecutive time. Now, concurrent to her solo success, a number of Wynette's duets with husband George Jones reached the top ten on the U.S. country singles chart, including The Ceremony, 1972, We're Gonna Hold On, 1973, and Golden Ring, 1976. Fans dubbed the couple the president and first lady of country music. Now, Wynette and Jones's famously turbulent marriage began in 1969 and ended in 1975, but their professional collaboration continued with regularity through the 1980s. Years later, in 1995, they made a reunion album entitled One. It was well-received, although it didn't achieve their earlier chart success. 1986 saw Wynette join the cast of the CBS now-defunct soap opera Capital on March 25, 1986, playing the role of a hairstylist turned singer, Darlene Stankowski. In late 1991, Wynette recorded a song with the British group, the KLF, titled Justified and Ancient, Stand By Your Jams which became a number one hit in 18 countries the following year and reached number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 in the United States. In 1992, 24 years after it topped the country chart, the song with which Wynette is most closely associated in the public eye not only re-entered the public consciousness, but became the subject of political debate. Asked during a 60 Minutes interview about her marriage to then-presidential candidate Bill Clinton, who had been accused of infidelity, future First Lady of the United States Hillary Clinton said, I'm not sitting here as some little woman standing by my man like Tammy Wynette. The end of this quotation has also appeared as some little woman standing by my man and baking cookies like Tammy Wynette. However, the reference to cookie baking more likely comes from an unrelated remark by Hillary Clinton. I suppose I could have stayed home and baked cookies and had teas, but what I decided to do was fulfill my profession, which I entered before my husband was in public life. The remark set off a firestorm of controversy. Wynette wrote to Clinton, saying, With all that is in me, I resent your caustic remark. I believe you have offended every true country music fan and every person who has made it on their own with no one to take them to the White House. In 1993, Wynette recorded a studio album with fellow country icons and friends, Lynn and Barton. 
Honky Tonk Angels with Certified Gold by the RIAA the following year, after selling more than 500,000 copies. In 1994, she recorded a studio album of duets with notable other stars from country and other genres, Without Walls, which would be her final solo studio album, including tracks where Wynette duetted with the likes of Elton John, Smokey Robinson, and Sting, along with fellow country stars including Wyona and Lyle Lovett. Now, the following year, she re-teamed up with her former husband and singing partner Jones to record one. The President and the First Lady of Country Music's first album together in 15 years would be the First Lady's final studio album. Now, just as a note, Wynette was married five times. Now, I couldn't make a video on Wynette without commenting on her alleged kidnapping. Wynette was reported to be kidnapped at gunpoint at a Nashville shopping mall on October 4, 1978. She claimed the masked attacker physically assaulted and abandoned her 80 miles south of Nashville. Wynette was documented with bruises and a broken cheekbone. One of Wynette's children, Jackie Bird Daly, in her 2000 memoir, wrote that her mother had confessed to her that the kidnapping was a hoax to cover up domestic violence from her fifth husband, George Ritchie. Ritchie has denied all the allegations. Tammy Wynette had many serious physical ailments beginning in the 1970s, after the birth of her daughter Georgette. Wynette had an appendectomy and a hysterectomy. Complications from the hysterectomy included adhesions which later formed into keloids. She developed a chronic inflammation of the bile duct and was hospitalized numerous times over the remainder of her life. Wynette also developed a serious addiction to painkilling medication in the 1980s. However, in 1986, she sought help, entering the Betty Ford Center for Drug Treatment that year. Just after Christmas 1994, Wynette woke in the middle of the night with severe pain and was rushed to Baptist Hospital now St. Thomas Midtown Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. She was comatose for days as a result of a bile duct infection. Once she was out of the coma, she underwent another operation. She resumed touring not long afterwards. After years of medical problems that resulted in numerous hospitalizations, roughly 26 major operations, and addiction to painkillers, Wynette died on April 6, 1998, at the age of 55, while sleeping on her couch in her Nashville, Tennessee home. Wynette's doctor from Pennsylvania said she died of a blood clot in her lung. Despite her persistent illnesses, she continued to perform until shortly before her death and had other performances scheduled. A public memorial service attended by about 1,500 people was held in Nashville's historic Ryman Auditorium on April 9, 1998. Okay, that's the end of our video. I sure hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of video and want us to keep producing them, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching.